You are about to listen to Kaku chapter 48. Lord, teach us to pray. Preached on Sunday morning, June 12, 2005, in Lakodro, Abidjan, Ivory Coast. Extracted from the book of Prophet Kaku Philippe. Extracted from the book of Prophet Kaku Philippe, the only true prophet sent by the Lord Jesus Christ in fulfillment of the cry of Matthew 25 6, for the salvation of our generation. Kaku chapter 48, Seigneur... Kaku chapter 48. Lord, teach us to pray. I regret a little the fact that some preachings have not been recorded. There is the boat of Tarshish, there is refusing to progress, but others like the precepts of the priesthood are available in audio, and especially, the meaning of the restitution. I do not think that I can preach them like I did. You see? It is when I finish that I regret not having recorded them. You see? Well, since there are several churches that believe, so that a church member there might not to say, instead of staying here, I will go where the prophet himself is to avoid such a thought. I will go round the assemblies. If this Sunday I preach here, the following Sunday I preach there, the following Sunday I preach somewhere else. Someone has just told me, that William Branham would have spoken about this glorious action of the Angel of the Covenant and the Lamb that took place, on April 24, 1993. William Branham would have said in 1963, the day he preached on the third seal, that in 1993 something would happen on the earth, he said something like. And, you see, if we are to three minutes of his coming, you see, which would represent nearly 30 years for us, or something like that. And in the brochure countdown reference 103, he said. You know, when John Glenn settled there, that morning, he was following the countdown. You see? And now we get to where it is said. In three minutes something will take off. They do not know what it is. It's midnight minus three minutes. Brother, it was within this week that I saw these references, and how many people here remember that since April 24, 1993, I said we are at midnight. Many say, Amen. William Branham said in 1963, We are at three minutes of his coming, you see, which would represent about 30 years for us. Or something like that. And 1963 plus 30 years. That gives 1993. And on April 24, 1993, the Lord Jesus Christ came down for the interpretation of the unknown language. Only the midnight cry closes the mouth to those who say that William Branham gave a false prophecy, concerning the return of the Lord Jesus Christ in 1993, I saw it on a website. Well, let's take our Bibles this morning in Revelation 8 verse 3 to 5. Then in Luke 11 verse 1. I take Luke 11. And as he was in prayer in a certain place, it came to pass, when he had ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as also John taught his disciples. Even the four ministries of Ephesians 4.11, have the mission of maintaining the faith of the church while awaiting a prophet messenger. Only a prophet messenger introduces the church into another phase. Never a pastor, an apostle, a teacher or anything else. Each period or stage of the Old Testament or New Testament was introduced by a prophet messenger. The departure out of Egypt, the entrance to Canaan until the advent of the Messiah, were marked by prophet messengers. Moses, Joshua, Samuel, Jeremiah, Habakkuk, Haggai, Zephaniah, Hosea, Ezekiel. And I say to you that from the Lord Jesus Christ, many prophets messenger have been sent to the nations, but they have not been mentioned. To introduce mankind into Christianity, it was a prophet messenger, John the Baptist who did this. To betroth Christ to the church, Paul, a prophet messenger, was needed to do that. For justification, a prophet messenger was needed. For sanctification a prophet messenger was needed. To bring the church into an age. A prophet messenger is always needed. For the opening of the seals, a prophet messenger was needed. 
for the midnight cry, a prophet messenger was needed. And for the cock crow, there will be a prophet messenger on the earth after me. It is not the Bible yet complete according to you, but a living prophet messenger. And I told you that at the time of the rapture of the bride, there will be a prophet messenger on the earth. The congregation says, Amen. Well, you see, here and all the places I have traveled to, a question has been coming up every time, Brother Philippe, how should we pray? And I decided to preach on this subject, and then to have a questions and answers session if possible. Well, you see, these are in Luke 11. Jews, sons of Abraham, bred according to the law and prophets, who ask the Lord Jesus their master, to teach them to pray. But before that, Moses taught them to pray. The prophets had taught them to pray. And previously John the Baptist had taught prayer to his disciples. It was the elevation of the revelation that ordered this every time. You see? How can Jews ask how to pray while many examples of prayers and psalms were already contained in the Old Testament? It was the humility and the scope of the revelation of their time that put them in that state. And it was necessary to be a son of God to accept this. The congregation says, Amen. The Pharisees, Sadducees, Hellenists, and all those ones, the proud had nothing to learn, and also their prayers were not according to the divine model, and through it, God was seeing that they were the rebels who had rejected the message of their time. Each person is identified through his or her prayer. A Catholic is identified through his prayer, a Methodist, Baptist, Anabaptist, Muslim, Buddhist. Every person on earth is identified through his prayer. And according to your prayer, God knows in heaven that you have accepted the living prophet of your time. And that the Jews knew it. That is why they told the Lord Jesus Christ to teach them to pray. Isaiah had taught prayer to those of his time. Jeremiah had taught prayer to those of his time. Amos had taught prayer to those of his time. John the Baptist had taught prayer to those of his time. And it was obvious that the apostles also asked the Lord Jesus Christ, the prophet of their time to teach them to pray. If you pray according to the past message, God knows and Satan also knows. And God having moved, Satan takes his place behind there and also claims all the attributes of God. For example, Rick Joyner's ministry is called Morning Star Ministry. That is the ministry of the bright morning star. Yet we know that at the beginning of the church, Jesus Christ was the morning shining star. But now a simple demon of which Rick Joyner is the mouthpiece is called so. And you all know by this message that the demons also are called Jesus Christ. And all fetish priests have become prophets. So we are bound to provide much more precise details than our predecessors. But in reality the disciples of John, and later those of the Lord Jesus were troubled by the new things they were hearing, in such a way that they no longer knew how to pray, others barely prayed. Jesus told them that all they did was the will of the devil, and that their rabbis were snakes. And when one learns that he has spent so many years doing the will of the devil, what does it prove that by praying in the same way, it is not the same devil that is invoked? The only solution was Luke 11 verse 1. Lord, teach us to pray, as also John taught his disciples. The congregation says, Amen. But what the disciples forgot, was the fact that they now had another master, and that they had passed from darkness to light and henceforth. The fact that they had left Satan the prince of darkness, to follow Jesus Christ the light of the world, their prayers were directly received. When you have accepted the living prophet of your time, your prayer is directly received before God. But what led the disciples to ask this question to the Lord Jesus? Well, when John the Baptist came, and began to tell them that the Pharisees had the devil for a father, and that they were praying the devil, his disciples said to themselves, if praying to the Lord of hosts that Moses taught them, somebody was telling them that it was the devil they were praying, 
and that it was the will of the devil they were doing, then there must be a special way to pray. See what Jesus said. I speak what I saw in my fathers. You also do the things which you have heard from your father. John 8 verse 38. However, from what they know, it is Moses who has prescribed everything they do. But in reality, this was not the case, apart from what their message had prescribed. Henceforth, the answer no longer depended on the appearance of the prayer. Yet if they had to pray as they used to do, they could never equal the Pharisees. And if today we were to pray as we were used to, we could never equal Catholics, Protestants, Evangelicals and Branhamists. They can pray continuously the whole night, they can do 40 days of fasting every year. And now they go up to 70 days, or even 100 days of fasting. Like madmen, they are not hungry because of possession. They are gladiators, Goliaths of this century. The congregation says, Amen. And by the spirit of the prophets of Baal, all their prayer is a repetition of fire and blood upon their bulls. That is their faithful. They stand there and cry to Baal, the fire of the Holy Spirit, fire, fire, I invoke fire, 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 exactly like their great-grandparents whom prophet Elijah had slain in 1 Kings 18 verse 25 to 40. The congregation says, Amen. Well, the Bible says that many Pharisees and Sadducees, certainly pious came to the baptism of John the Baptist, and became his disciples. It was especially they, who were troubled by the teachings of John the Baptist and asked to be taught on how they should pray. But above all, why did these disciples ask to be taught about prayer? It was because they had received a new message that called their practices and old beliefs into question, and therefore, entering into themselves, they found that they should be taught on several things, including prayer. Henceforth they had understood that the one whom they invoked, as being the Jehovah who brought them out of Egypt was Satan. You see? Henceforth the evangelical and other books were called books of magic, and burned according to Acts 19 verse 19. However it was through these books that the rabbis had taught them to pray, as you see it now. And the only thing left to them was to ask humbly to be taught how to pray. And that's what they did. That showed that they understood the depth of the message of their time. Well, now, let me also say that prayer is not a recitation of Matthew 6 verse 9 to 11 or of the Psalms. You see? I do not mean that Catholics can continue their recitation of Hail Mary, or the Creed of the Apostles. And the Methodists, Our Father, and Evangelicals invoke their fire of Baal. Do not say, Brother Philippe says that we do not need to change our way of praying. All you picked up in the churches, forget them. What you do not see in the Bible, do not do it. Have you seen that to chase a demon, anyone invoked fire? You see? It is a mystical practice of exorcism in the East. It is an incantation. The Lord Jesus Christ delivered paralytics, epileptics, madmen, and show me a single verse in which he invoked fire. When God uses fire, it is to consume. We see this in Genesis with Sodom and Gomorrah. We see this with Elijah in 1 Kings 18 verse 25 to 40 before the prophets of Baal and in 2 Kings 1 verse 9 to 12 over the 50s of King Ahaziah. These are mystical, occult and spiritualist practices. And now all the churches have classified themselves to the rank of mystical orders. The use of the Bible by the mystical orders is based on the recitation of the Psalms. And the Bibles, Louis Segonda and King James, are favorable to these practices. And if today you have a Louis Sagan Bible in your home, it is like a fetish pot that you have in your house. It's right. The congregation says, Amen. The prayer must be an inspiration. This is why it requires first, either songs of meditation, or the meditation of the Psalms. There are Psalms appropriate to every circumstance. A prayer cannot go up to God unless we live it. That is to say to be in the atmosphere of what we are saying, as we see in 1 Samuel chapter 1 with Hannah, 
Matthew 6 verse 9 to 11 is not a prayer to recite. It is not an incantation. Thus, before starting the prayer, we must be in spirit. And the proof that we are in spirit is that we do not want to stop the prayer. And the words and the subjects come by themselves. And we speed up independently of our will with the help and grace of God. The first part of the prayer is to glorify, magnify and elevate God with also the names and attributes of the hour. Proverbs 28 verse 9 says that if someone turns away his ear, not to listen to the prophetic message of his time, even his prayer is an abomination. In the time of Moses, it was, he that turneth away his ear to not hearken to the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Proverbs 28 verse 9. You see? If a woman is not subject to her husband, even her prayer is an abomination. If anyone rejects the midnight cry, even his prayer is an abomination. What does that mean? If anyone is Catholic, Protestant, Evangelical, and Branhamist, or a member of Islam or Judaism, even his prayer is an abomination. If anyone is called Tommy Osborne or E-World Frank even his prayer is an abomination. If you have rejected the gospel of your time, even your prayer is an abomination. The congregation says, Amen. And all this says that our prayer is endorsed by God. Because we have received the message of our time. Thus, when we say, Jesus Christ, it shows of itself that it is the same Jesus Christ that Paul preached. While if a Branhamist, Assembly of Gods, Methodist, or Baptist says Jesus Christ, Satan knows that it is of him that he wishes to speak. You can pray to God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel. But if you have rejected Jesus Christ living through the message of your time, only Satan can answer you. The congregation says, Amen. Now notice this. If you have accepted the message of your time, whether you are illiterate or not, the true Jesus Christ recognizes himself through your prayer. You see? If a fetishist, Catholic, Branhamist, Protestant or Evangelical prays and says, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, bless this ceremony and send your power, your Holy Spirit upon me, and that this anointing seizes him to operate miracles and healings. It is the devil. The congregation says, Amen. All that interests us, is that they are fetish priests. The canary is called Louis Sagand, and formerly the talisman was on the loins. But now it is carried under the name of rosary, and the nanziji of the Muslim is called holy water. You see? Thus, no matter the prayer of a Branhamist, Catholic, Protestant or Evangelical, it is the devil who will work. If some Branhamists who have rejected the midnight cry say, Glory to God. Yesterday we saw the pillar of fire on our pastor, or an angel came to fortify us in our assembly, and we photographed it. Then this angel is Lucifer. The congregation says, Amen. Now observe the mystery of Luke 11 verse 1 to 4. The disciples ask to be taught about prayer. And we see that they are not given a special answer. What the Lord said, any rabbi, priest or Jewish pastor could teach better than that in his synagogue. The mystery lies more in the acceptance of the message of their time. Otherwise Jesus would have taught them that before they asked him. Given the importance of the prayer and faith. Today, there are tons of books about prayer, but I tell you that if you have believed in the message of your time, and you are baptized, you speak and that is enough as the Lord himself did. The congregation says, Amen. Also, I would like to say that it is not at the moment of prayer that we must seek to be in the atmosphere of the prayer, because the prayer is a communion with God. And each act is supposed to prepare us to that. Notice that God takes as an example of worshippers on earth birds, like angels in heaven because these ones are constantly praising God. And I believe that David was rightly cited as being the man after God's heart. And throughout the Psalms, the reign and life of David, no man was found to have worshipped God like David the son of Jesse. And I think that a good sister should not lack praise songs in her mouth. Sisters, that embellishes you more. And you will also notice that if you are in spirit to start with, 
you will be inspired to magnify God, and the subjects of prayer will come by themselves. We have got to the stage where we should no longer interrupt prayers on Sunday mornings, and if you are used to singing praises to God, while you are singing these praises, you will be inspired to pray and magnify God, and to express your gratitude for His good deeds. What interests me, it is that you magnify God, express your gratitude for all that He has done, and is still doing in the visible and the invisible, after which you will ask for anything you want. And I would like to ask you to pray specially for me, for all those who stand before you for a responsibility. For all the saints as it was spoken of Apophis in Colossians 4 verse 12. If you feel lazy to pray for yourselves then pray for us. Do not feel guilt on yourselves any longer by believing there must be a special prayer to make, there is none. Even if you do not say, God of Kaku Philippe. Believe that your prayer is right because you have accepted the message of your time. The congregation says, Amen. Observe the prayers of the Lord Himself, and you will see that there is no mystery. When He prays, He simply says Father, while He Himself says that Satan also is Father. See the prayer of John 12 verse 27 to 28. Now, my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, deliver me from this hour, but that is why I came at this hour. Father, glorify thy name. And there came a voice from heaven. I have glorified him, and I will glorify him again. And we know that if it was a Branhamist, a Catholic or an Evangelical who had prayed, the Father he is talking of is the devil. And the voice from heaven is that of an angel of Satan. Even if he speaks sincerely to God, it would be Satan who would answer. The congregation says, Amen. It is the same for salvation. The first thing of all is to believe the gospel of one time, and to remain firm before trials without murmuring nor discouraging oneself. What did the robber on the cross do? Seventy day fasts? No. But he accepted the truth of his time. What did Cornelius do? In addition to his many alms, he had to accept the only truth of his time. And when you have done it, your prayer is received directly if your life is only worthy of the message. You see? You can raise the same prayer as a Baptist. But your two prayers will have different orientations. It's simply that. The congregation says, Amen. Next Sunday, I will talk about spiritual gifts, but no one thing, since everyone has repented for their beliefs, spirits and practices of the past. If a spiritual gift operates here, do not see the devil through it. We believe that the Holy Spirit manifests the nine gifts of 1 Corinthians 12. The Holy Spirit gives dreams and visions. We must know that everything happens under the gaze of the angel of April 24, 1993, the faithful and true who brought this message. According to the promise of Matthew 25 6 and Revelation 12 14. And may God bless you. You've just listened to Kaku chapter 48. Lord, teach us to pray. The message of Prophet Kaku Philippe is in more than 100 sermons, in audio and written versions, and more than 20 video interviews. You can get them for free on the website www.philipkaku.org or in version for mobile phone 1-800-227-5433.